A Leave Taking by Algernon Charles Swinburne Let us go hence, my songs, she will not hear. Let us go hence together without fear. Keep silence now, for singing time is over. And over all old things and all things dear, she loves not you nor me as all we love her. Yea, though we sing as angels in her ear, she would not hear. Let us rise up and part, she will not know. Let us go seaward as the great winds go, full of blown sand and foam. What help is here? There is no help, for all these things are so, and all the world is bitter as a tear. And how these things are, though ye strove to show, she would not know. Let us go hence and rest, she will not love. We gave love many dreams and days to keep, Flowers without scent and fruits that would not grow, Saying, If thou wilt thrust in thy sickle and reap, All is not reaped, all is reaped now, No grass is left to mow, And we that sowed, though all we fell on sleep, She would not weep. Let us go hence and rest, she will not love, She shall not hear us if we sing hereof, Nor see love's ways, how sore they are and steep, Come hence, let be, lie still, it is enough. Love is a barren sea, bitter and deep, And though she saw all heaven in a flower above, She would not love. Let us give up, go down, she will not care. Though all the stars made much gold of all the air, And the sea moving saw before it move One moon flower making all the foam flowers fair. Though all those waves went over us and drove, Deep down the stifling lips and drowning hair, She would not care. Let us go hence, go hence, she will not see. Sing all once more together, surely she, She too, remembering days and words that were, Will turn a little towards us, Sighing, but we, we are hence, we are gone, As though we had not been there, Nay, and though all men, seeing, had pity on me, she would not see. <clears throat> the Unquiet Grave by Anonymous The wind doth blow today, my love, and a few small drops of rain. I never had but one true love, in cold grave she was lain. I'll do as much for my true love as any young man may, I'll sit and mourn all at her grave for twelve month and a day. The twelve month and a day being up, the dead began to speak, Oh, who sits weeping on my grave and will not let me sleep? Tis I, my love, sit on your grave and will not let you sleep, For I crave one kiss of your clay-cold lips, and that is all I seek. You crave one kiss of my clay-cold lips, but my breath smells earthy strong, if you have one kiss of my clay-cold lips, your time will not be long. Tis down in yonder garden green, love, where we used to walk. The finest flower that e'er was seen is withered to a stalk. The stalk is withered dry, my love, so will our hearts decay. So make yourself content, my love, till God calls you away. Autumn by John Clare The thistle's down's flying, though the winds are all still. On the green grass now lying, now mounting the hill. The spring from the fountain now boils like a pot. Through stones past the counting it bubbles red hot. The ground parched and cracked is like overbaked bread. The green sward all racked is bents, dried up and dead. The fallow fields glitter like water indeed, And gossamers twitter flung from weed unto weed. Hilltops like hot iron glitter bright in the sun, And the rivers where iron burn to gold as they run. Burning hot is the ground, liquid gold is the air, Whoever looks round sees eternity there. This is the key of the kingdom, by Anonymous. This is the key of the kingdom, In that kingdom is a city, In that city is a town, in that town there is a street, In that street there winds a lane, 
In that lane there is a yard. In that yard there is a house. In that house there is a room. And in that room an empty bed. And on that bed a basket. A basket of sweet flowers. Of flowers. Of flowers. A basket of sweet flowers. Flowers in a basket. Basket on the bed. Bed in the chamber. Chamber in the house. House in the weedy yard, yard in the winding lane, lane in the broad street, street in the high town, town in the city, city in the kingdom. This is the key of the kingdom, of the kingdom this is the key. <clears throat> the Dong with the A Luminous Nose by Edward Lear When awful darkness and silence reign, over the great Grombulian plain, through the long, long wintry nights, when the angry breakers roar, as they beat on the rocky shore, when storm clouds brood on the towering heights of the hills of the Chankly Boar, then through the vast and gloomy dark there moves what seems a fiery spark, a lonely spark, with silvery rays piercing the cold black night, a meteor strange and bright, Hither and thither the vision strays, a single lurid light. Slowly it wanders, pauses, creeps, and on it sparkles, flashes, and leaps, and ever as onward it gleaming goes, a light on the bong tree's stems it throws, and those who watch at that midnight hour from hall or terrace or lofty tower cry, as the wild light passes along, the dong, the dong, the wandering dong through the forest goes, the dong, the dong, the dong with a luminous nose. Long years ago, the dong was happy and gay, till he fell in love with a jumbly girl who came to those shores one day. For the jumblies came in a sieve they did, landing at eve near the zemery fid, where the oblong oysters grow, and the rocks are smooth and gray, and all the woods and the valleys rang with the course they daily and nightly sang. Far and few, far and few, are the lands where the jumblies live. Their heads are green and their hands are blue, and they went to sea in a sieve. Happily, happily passed those days while the cheerful jumblies stayed. They danced in circlets all night long to the plaintive pipe of the lively dong in moonlight, shine or shade. For day and night he was always there by the side of the jumbly girl so fair with her sky-blue hands and her sea-green hair till the morning came of that hateful day when the jumblies sailed in their sieve away and the dong was left on the cruel shore gazing, gazing forevermore ever keeping his weary eyes on that pea-green sail on the far horizon singing the jumbly chorus still. As he sat all day on the grassy hill, far and few, far and few are the lands where the jumblies live. Their heads are green and their hands are blue, and they went to sea in a sieve. But when the sun was low in the west, the dong arose and said, What little sense I once possessed has quite gone out of my head. And since that day he wanders still by lake and forest, marsh and hill, Singing, oh, somewhere in valley or plain, might I find my jumbly girl again. Forever I'll seek by lake or shore, till I find my jumbly girl once more. Playing a pipe with silvery squeaks, since then his jumbly girl he seeks, and because by night he could not see, he gathered the bark of the twangrum tree on the flowery plain that grows, and he wove him a wondrous nose, a nose as strange as a nose could be, of vast proportions and painted red, and tied with cords to the back of his head, in a hollow, rounded space it ended, with a luminous lamp within suspended, all fenced about with a bandage doubt to prevent the wind from blowing it out, and with holes all round to send the light and gleaming rays on the dismal night. And now each night and all day night long, over those plains still roams the dong, 
and above the wail of the chimp and snipe you may hear the squeak of his plaintive pipe while ever he seeks but seeks in vain to meet with his jumbly girl again lonely and wild all night he goes the dong with a luminous nose and all who watch from that midnight hour from hall or terrace or lofty tower cry as they trace the meteor bright moving along through the dreary night this is the hour when forth he goes the dong with a luminous nose yonder over the plain he goes he goes he goes the dong with the luminous nose <clears throat> weep no more sad fountains by anonymous weep no more sad fountains what need you flow so fast look how the snowy mountains heaven's sun doth gently waste but my son's heavenly eyes view not your weeping that now lies sleeping softly now softly lies sleeping sleep is a reconciling a rest that peace begets doth not the sun rise smiling when fair at even he sets rest you then rest sad eyes melt not in weeping while she lies sleeping softly now softly lies sleeping will you walk a little faster lewis carroll will you walk a little faster said a whiting to a snail there's a porpoise close behind us and he's treading on my tail see how eagerly the lobsters and the turtles all advance they're waiting on the shingle will you come and join the dance will you won't you will you won't you will you join the dance will you won't you will you won't you won't you join the dance you can really have no notion how delightful it will be when they take us up and throw us with the lobsters out to sea but the snail replied too far too far and gave a look askance said he thanked the white and kindly but he would not join the dance would not could not would not could not would not join the dance would not could not would not could not could not join the dance what matters it how far we go his scaly friend replied there is another shore you know upon the other side the further off from england the nearer is to france then turn not pale beloved snail but come and join the dance will you won't you will you won't you won't you join the dance will you won't you will you won't you will you join the dance <laughs> I love the lass by George Wither. I love the lass, a fair one, as fair was ever was seen. She was indeed a rare one, another Sheba queen. But fool as then I was, I thought she loved me too. But now, alas, she has left me, Falero Lero Lou. And as abroad we walk it, as lovers' fashion is, oft as we sweetly talk it, the sun would steal a kiss the wind upon her lips likewise most sweetly blew but now alas she has left me falero lero lou many a merry meeting my love and i have had she was my only sweeting she made my heart feel glad the tears stood in her eyes like to the morning dew but now alas she has left me falero lero lou her cheeks were like the cherry, her skin was white as snow. When she was blithe and merry, she angel-like did show. Her waist exceedingly small, the fives did fit her shoe. But now, alas, she's left me, father o lero lou In summertime or winter, she had her heart's desire. I still did scorn to stint her from sugar, sack, or fire. The world went round about no cares we ever knew but now alas she's left me father lero lou no riches now can raise me no want make me despair no misery amaze me nor yet for want i care i have lost a world itself my earthly heaven i do since she alas hath left me father lero lou <clears throat> the splendor falls on castle walls Alfred Lord Tennyson 
The splendor falls on castle walls and snowy summits old in story. The long light shakes across the lakes and the wild cataract leaps in glory. Blow, bugle, blow, set the wild echoes flying. Blow, bugle, answer echoes, dying, dying, dying. Oh, hark, oh, hear, how thin and clear, and thinner, clearer, farther going. Oh, sweet and far, from cliff and scar, the horns of Elfland faintly blowing. Blow, let us hear the purple glens replying. Blow, bugle, answer, echoes, dying, dying, dying. O oh, love, they die in yon rich sky. They faint on hill or field or river. Our echoes roll from soul to soul and grow forever and forever. Blow, bugle, blow, set the wild echoes flying. And answer, echoes, answer, dying, dying, dying. So we'll go no more a-roving by George Gordon Lord Byron. So we'll go no more a-roving so late into the night, though the heart be still as loving and the moon be still as bright, for the sword out wears its sheath and the soul wears out the breast, and the heart must pause to breathe and love itself have rest. Though the night was made for loving and the day returns too soon, yet we'll go no more a-roving by the light of the moon. The Dalliance of the Eagles by Walt Whitman Skirting the river road, my forenoon walk my rest. Skyward in air a sudden muffled sound, the dalliance of the eagles. The rushing amorous contact, high in space together, the clinching interlocking claws, a living fierce gyrating wheel, four beating wings, two beaks, a swirling mass, tight grappling and tumbling, turning, clustering loops, straight downward falling, till over the river poised, the twain yet one, a moment's lull, a motionless still balance in the air, then parting, talons loosing, upward again on slow firm pinions slanting, their separate diverse flight she hers, he his, pursuing. November by Robert Bridges <clears throat> The lonely season in lonely lands when fled are half the birds and mist lie low in the sun is rarely seen nor strayeth far from his bed the short days pass unwelcomed one by one out of the ricks the mantled engine stands crestfallen deserted now for all hands are told to the plough and ere it is drawn appear the teams following and crossing far and near as hour by hour they brought in the broad bands of the striped fields and behind them firk and prance, the heavy rooks and dawns gray-pated dance, as a while surmounting a crest in sharp outline, a miniature of toil, a gem's design, they are pictured horses and men, nor now nearby, above the lane they shout, lifting the share, by the trim hedgerow bloomed with purple air, where under the thorns dead leaves and huddle lie, packed by the gales of autumn and in and out, these small wrens glide with a happy note of cheer, and yellow amorets flutter above and about, gay, familiar, in fear. And now, if the night shall be cold across the sky, linnets and twites and small flocks helter-skelter, all the afternoon to the gardens fly, from thistle pastures hurrying to gain the shelter of American rhododendron or cherry laurel, and here and there near chilly setting of sun, in an isolated green tree a congregation of starlings chatter and chide, thick set as summer leaves in garrulous quarrel, suddenly they hush as one, the tree top springs, and off with a whirl of wings they fly by the score to the holly thicket and there with the myriads more dispute for the roosts and from the unseen nation a babble of tongues like running water increase unceasing makes live the wood of flocking cries increasing wrangling discordantly incessantly while falls the night on them self-occupied the long dark night that lengthens slow 
deepening with winter to starve grass and tree, and soon to bury in snow the earth that sleeping neath her frozen stole, shall dream a dream cleft from the sunless pool of how her end shall be. Drinking Song by John Still Back and side go bare, go bare, both foot and hand go cold, but belly God send thee good ale enough, whether it be new or old. I cannot eat but little meat, my stomach is not good, but sure I think that I can drink with him that wears a hood. Though I go bare, take you no care, I am nothing a cold, I stuff my skin so full within of jolly good ale and old. Back and side go bare, go bare, both foot and hand go cold. But belly God send thee good ale enough, whether it be new or old. I love no roast but a nut brown toast and a crab laid in the fire. A little bread shall do me stead, much bread I do not desire. No frost, no snow, no wind I choke can hurt me if I would. I am so wrapped and thoroughly lapped of jolly good ale and old. Back and side go bare, go bare, both foot and hand go cold. But belly God send thee good ale enough, whether it be new or old. And told my wife that as her life loveth well a good ale to seek, full oft drinks she till she may see the tears run down her cheek. Then doth she troll me to the bowl, even as a moth worm should, and saith, Sweetheart, I took my part of this jolly good ale and old. Back and side go bare, go bare, both foot and hand go cold. But belly God send thee good ale enough, whether it be new or old. Now let them drink till they nod and wink, even as good fellows should do. They shall not miss to have the bliss good ale doth bring men to. And all poor souls that have scoured bowls or have them lustily trolled, God save the lives of them and their wives, whether they be young or old. Back and side go bear, go bear, both foot and hand go cold. But belly God send thee good ale enough, whether it be new or old. <clears throat> Love will find out the way by anonymous. Over the mountains and under the waves, under the fountains and under the graves, under floods that are deepest, which Neptune obey, over rocks that are steepest, love will find out the way. When there is no place for the glowworm to lie, where there is no space for receipt of a fly, where the midge dares not venture, lest herself fast she lay, if love come he will enter and will find out the way. You may esteem him a child for his might, or you may deem him a coward from his flight. But if she whom love doth honor be concealed from the day, set a thousand guards upon her, love will find out the way. Some think to lose him by having him confined, and some do suppose him poor heart to be blind. But if never so close you wall him, do the best that you may, blind love, if you so call him, will find out his way. You may train the eagle to stoop to your fist, or you may inveigle the phoenix of the east, the lioness, you may move her to give over her prey, but you'll never stop a lover, he will find out his way. If the earth it should part him, it would gallop it over, if the seas should overthwart him, he would swim to the shore, should his love become a swallow through the air to stray, love will lend wings to follow and will find out the way. There is no striving to cross his intent. There is no contriving his plots to prevent. But if once the message greet him that his true love doth stay, if death should come and meet him, love will find out the way.